digress. We are here on the MMA Fight Corner, and guys, joining us right now on the line is UFC fighter Josh Thompson. Josh, we last saw you at UFC 162. You're going to be fighting Anthony Pettis coming up here at UFC Fox 9, December 14th. Thanks so much for coming on to the corner. How are you today, my friend? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Uh, we're doing fantastic. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Yeah, Josh, when we saw you at the uh, when we saw you at the expo at one. Hello, Josh. Yeah. Hello. You got is your radio down? <laughs> Yeah, no, it is. Why? Oh, no, okay, we got a little feedback there, but much better now. Uh, when we saw you uh, at the convention 162, the uh, the UFC put on that fan thing, you came by the, the set, and you were talking, actually, about wanting to fight Anthony Pettis at the time, and he wasn't even the champion, wasn't even set to have a fight, I think, at the moment, or he was set to fight Aldo. Now you are fighting him. You're getting what you wanted, but this time it's it's for a title. How's that feel? Uh, it feels good, you know. I mean, I think a fight with Anthony is uh, it, it definitely it holds a higher prestige. I think, you know, given the fact that not only is he the champion now, but I mean, it just it makes it a lot more a lot more appealing, obviously, to fight someone of his caliber and his his talent and stuff like that for something that's that's just important, you know, for the title. So it's uh, it's great. Um, uh, you know, and. Ahead of that, what have you envisioned going down with Anthony? Because you've obviously kind of had him on your radar. You've thought about him. How do you see this going between the two of you? Where do you see your strengths? Um, you know, I really don't see like one. You can't you can't just beat him in one area. You got to beat him in a bunch of different areas. You know, I got to be able to pick him apart and on the feet, on the ground, everywhere. You know, so I mean, I really realistically, like I pick my fights. I like on who I, who I want to fight, or I make a push for who, for the guys that I want to fight, uh, based on what I think the crowd would like to see. You know, and guys like me and Pettis, guys like, you know, me and probably TJ Grant, you know, these these guys, they have that go-forward mentality, like, you know, Gil and I, I know what guys are going to make me look good and make and give the fans, you know, uh, an opportunity to have, a, you know, to watch the fight in a lifetime. Well, what's awesome. So to me, Go ahead. I mean, just to me, I, that, those are the things that I focus on when I'm looking at guys to fight. And when I, when I think of guys I'd like to fight, I only bring up the names. I feel like the fans are going to get the best uh, benefit out of it. You know what I mean? Like, for me, it's, yeah, sure, Anthony was, you know, the next step up to the title. Now he has the title. You know, but, I mean, I was asking to fight TJ also, you know, because, I mean, I like TJ's style, how he comes forward, he's aggressive. You know, those are the type of fights that are going to make fans you know, um, want to come watch you fight again. And not only that, but, I mean, then it gives you an opportunity to fight, you know, to fight the guys that you, you may potentially get a bonus for. You know I mean? Those are the type of guys you want to fight. Absolutely. And speaking of those fans, man, you're pretty much, you know, in the next best place that's not San Jose. So uh, as far as being close to the fans and everything, are you expecting, like, a huge crowd, a huge outpouring from the uh, Bay Area there for you in Sacramento? Well, I mean, I really don't know. I mean, it's, it's, really, hard to, it's really hard to tell, you know. I mean, um, we'll see what happens when the time comes. I mean, I think I, I think everyone will be, everyone, everyone that's fighting on that car is just happy to ride on the car. So that's right. Kinda, you know, you're right. It's just a huge. You know, he's from Sacramento. The fight's in Sacramento. You got Chad Mendes, I believe, fighting as well. You know, and so um, you know those those guys. You know, it's about a two-hour difference. You know, it's about two hours away from San Jose. But they um, you know, they've been in Sacramento. I mean, obviously, his almost his whole life, I guess, and um, at least his whole career. And um. You know, so, I mean, yeah, I'm sure I'll have quite a few people that came out, you know, come out that way to watch the fight. It's going to be a great fight, and I'm just excited about it, you know. And I think the crowd's going to be it's going to be great. It always is in the Bay Area. I mean, whether it's Oakland or whether it's San Jose or whether it's uh, Sacramento, you know, the crowds are usually, uh, usually come out in full force. Very true. And you've been through some championship wars in your time, uh, and you know what it's like to go five rounds in a fight and put everything out there on the mat. Uh, what did you change so far in training to get ready for the next five-round war of your life? <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I haven't changed anything. Uh, it's just, I mean, all, all I do is I make a little tiny tweak, you know, um, for, the, for the camp now that I know it's five rounds, you know what I mean? You know, I'll spar my five rounds, and I'll, I'll grapple five rounds versus sparring three and grappling three. I mean, you know, that's, that's really about it. You know, the cardio may change a little bit as far as, you know, how long you do it, um, you know, how many more sprints you add on, and, but that's about it. Other than that, and, you know, nothing really, nothing really changes. 
Uh, you know, I've got a question for you, Josh. This is Dave. Um, I'm real interested. I mean, you know, Heidi was talking about, you know, the Bay Area, the San Jose region. For some of our listeners here on the MMA Fight Corner might not realize what kind of a story you actually had growing up. Uh, you know, you had some troubled times. Can you tell us a little bit about how mixed martial arts fighting has really changed your life? I mean, how has this developed you into the kind of person that you are today? You know, I can't, I can't explain it enough. Um, you, what you've done is you take a kid off the street, you put him in, into a gym, like a wrestling room or into a gym or whatever it is, right? And you, you get him around people that can beat him up, and the next thing you know, he starts learning how to defend himself the proper way and not just thinking he's a tough guy. He realizes all these people that are out there that are tougher than him. I mean, the example I can give is, like, you know, I used to pick on my brother all the time. You know, my brother was taking jiu-jitsu when I was at my freshman in college. And I was wrestling in college, and he was he was just he was a freshman in high school, you know. And so um, he was wrestling, and I was wrestling, and obviously I was a lot better wrestler at the time than him. But he came home from jujitsu during the summer. I was wrestling around with him, and he caught me in a leg lock. And it was just one of those things. Like here's my little brother doing something to me, and it kind of puts a little it kind of puts puts things into perspective. That tough guy that walks on the street, like I used to be, like I used to try and walk around that with that little bit of a chip on my shoulder. Um, you know, out on the street, you realize the, the kids that are out there, the people that are out there, they, they may not look tough, but they could be the kid that's training jiu-jitsu that knows how to sub you or knows how to get an ankle lock. You know, and so Absolutely. it put into perspective for me exactly, like, how, how to keep my ego in check because you never know who you're going to run into. You know, there's a couple of kids that I was, when I was learning some Thai boxing and some jiu-jitsu, these kids that were maybe like 15, 16 years old and I was 19, 20 years old, they were Golden Gloves boxers, but they would just tattoo me on the feet, you know. And so I would have never have, you never, you never think that when you're, when you're just walking around the streets or downtown when you're, you know, you're trying to act tough. You never think those things. So you put them in, into a gym where they see these kids that are, are in a wrestling room. Or you see these kids that are, you know, younger than you, look stronger than you, but, man, they're technicians. They know the, they know the craft. They know the sport, whatever it is, and they can, they can put a wall up on you. You know, and that kind of humbles the person that you used to be and lets you grow individually as, as a better person, I think, you know, not just in society, but just, you know, for yourself. Absol you learn a lot absolutely. more about yourself. You know, speaking about being from the Bay Area, I mean, Josh, you've fought all over the world and you've had wins in, in Japan, in America, hell, at the Playboy Mansion. Where, where is your favorite fi uh, place to fight? Because most of your fights have taken place in San Jose. So, like, do you feel that there's that home field advantage there? No, I don't feel it's the home field advantage. I mean, if people don't understand, like, yeah, it's nice to have the home crowd, but it, it is stressful fighting, you know, near home and in your home and those type of things. You know, um, there's a lot of there's a lot of pressure that goes along with it. Let me give you an example. Like, this, uh, this fight was announced. And, um, I mean, it was within, it was, it was before, actually, my brother was already calling me and congratulating me, asking me when tickets go on sale, before, uh, before my manager even called me and told me I was fighting. Wow, wow. Well, so, there, there's a lot more pressure that goes along with it because, you know, I mean, since the fight's been announced, I've had nothing but family and friends and people you haven't talked to in six months to a year, maybe even longer. You know, good luck, where can I get tickets? It's like, those are things that... You sometimes just want to turn your phone off, even though you appreciate the support. It's like, you know, I need to focus on the fight and the ticket stuff. You know, you have, you have to get hold of the UFC. You have to go through Ticketmaster. You're gonna, it's like those are things that you don't want to be rude and be a jerk about. But, you know, because they're your family and your friends. But you sometimes have to put that. You have, to, you have to say those types of things to make sure you, you can focus on your goal. Well, listen, I, I was going to say, man, it, it's not like you're Floyd Mayweather. You don't have $605,000 to spend on tickets, apparently, for the family, because I saw that's what he came came out of his check. So, listen, Josh, we really appreciate you coming on here, taking some time with us on the Fight Corner. Obviously, best of luck against Anthony Pettis, hey. a championship fight coming up uh, December 14th. Floyd Mayweather is putting three hundred thousand dollars down on Texas A and M this weekend. I don't know who they're playing, but man, that'd be nice to have that. Uh, yeah, yeah I mean, right? yeah, but it's it's easy when you can cover a favorite. You know, you put three hundred thousand to win one hundred thousand, and I mean, so if somebody was betting three bucks, not a big deal. But uh, Josh, again, thanks so much for coming on with us. We hope that we get to talk to you again after you fight Anthony Pettis again. Best of luck coming up, UFC on Fox. Thank you, December fourteenth. Thanks so much, Josh. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break here. When we come back, we are going to get online with Daniel Cormier. Stay tuned to the MMA Fight.